Welcome to the ITU studio here in Durban, South Africa, for ITU Telecom World 2018. I'm very pleased to be joined in the studio today by Andy Bates, who is Executive Director for EMEA for the Global Cyber Alliance. Andy, welcome to the studio. Um, thanks for having us. Now, I'd like to start off by talking about smart digital development. It's the, uh, the theme of this year's ITU Telecom World. What does it mean to you? Um, I, I don't want to sound too depressing by saying smart equals more cybercrime, but uh, as you know, the cost of cybercrime on the planet is currently $600 billion. And with IoT and smart devices, I think it's a good opportunity to get ahead of the curve, but I see that curve running away from us already. So I guess, I guess the downside of me says cybercrime is going to get worse unless we, uh, we kind of do something about it. It's a great opportunity, great for the entrepreneurs, but for those of us whose uh, role it is is to combat cybercrime, maybe even more worries ahead, I guess. So tell us a little bit about the Global Cyber Alliance. What, what are your, your main uh, aims and, and, and achievements so far? Great question. Um, so we're not for profit, we're effectively a, a charity, a global independent organisation. Uh, our mission is to try and reduce cybercrime as much as possible and reduce the impacts of cyber criminals. And we do that by giving away free cyber security tools, which is why we've had such a great reception here in, uh, in Durban this week. And in terms of the achievements, um, we've got a product called DMARC, which is a, a little bit techy, but it helps people to stop spoofing email because without this solution, people can pretend to be you or indeed the ITU on, on the internet. And uh, we also launched a product called Quad9, uh, which is, a, again, protects multiple millions of users and is a, a cool way of using DNS for those who know what, what DNS is in the, in the telco world. It's effectively a free DNS filtering service. And indeed, we're moving on to build an, an IoT honeypot, IoT cyber range, which goes all the way back to the smart solutions kind of first question. Now, these products you say are free, but what's your business model? How are you making it pay for yourselves? Um, pretty well like a charity. In fact, we are registered as a charity, so uh, people donate money to us altruistically. Uh, we were founded by the New York District Attorney, so he threw in um, several, and I do mean several million dollars, which ironically was seized from criminals in, in terms of asset forfeiture, so I think there's a nice moral story there. But yeah, we receive grants from governments, altruistic donations, uh, people who want to in, invest in us, which I think is a good um, theme, which we've, we've heard while we've been out in Durban, where the developed world is helping to generate tools, which of course can be used to, to help the developing world. You mentioned spoofing emails. How, how do you avoid that? Uh, indeed, the solution DMARC, which I'm afraid is a, is a five-letter acronym. Uh, so if you go to our website, we've got a, a wizard. DMARC was a standard invented by the IETF in 2010. Um, it's amazing, I think approximately 77% of businesses haven't turned this solution on. So I simply turn on DMARC. Uh, I wouldn't kid you that it's, it's a trivial process. It's easy to configure. Uh, it's harder, as with all things in life, to, to get it completely perfect and, and, and make it successful. Uh, but we hope, currently have a project called DMARC 90, which is challenging governments around the world to move forward with DMARC in, in around 90 days. Many don't get there, but it's, it's always good to lay down a, a challenge. And as a new member of the ITU, how's your experience been so far? Um, it's been brilliant. I, I think you interviewed uh, Phil, our, uh, my boss, and, and our president in Geneva at the signing ceremony, and hence we've come here to Durban to, uh, to meet the community. Um, it's been brilliant the past two days, particularly, particularly for myself, to be able to meet so many ministers, uh, regulators, directors of ICT all in one space, whereas normally we would have had to travel thousands of miles. And, and again, we've received a, a really warm reception. So I think our investment, our mutual investment with the ITU to date has been, been really good. And what should we be worried about or what should we be uh, hopeful about in terms of cybersecurity for the future? Um, I think I'd be a fool if I said we would solve all the problems in the next two or three years. I think in terms of hopeful, um, I'm certainly hopeful that every IoT device that leaves manufacturers around the world in the next two or three years will be embracing the kind of free cybersecurity tools that we've, we've been talking about. Um, when you make a, a $10 device that's designed to last for the next 10 years and live in the internet, you can't really have full-on firewall and virus scanning security. So my kind of plea to the, the manufacturing and telco community is to use all of those, those um, solutions that, that we and others are providing out there. So I think this new concept of, of free cybersecurity is hopefully something that you will be able to Google and, and will be able to discover some answers with, and, and you'll be able to see in, in the solutions you buy on the high street maybe in the next two or three years. Andy Bates, thank you very much indeed. Thank you for your time.